Hey everyone, it's Christina. I am here in the Bon Appetit test kitchen to have a very secret conversation about my friend Chris Morocco. Once again, we are putting his super taster abilities to the test and this is Mang Chi's Tak Pokum Tang, which is also known as spicy braised chicken. And Mang Chi is kind of like the Korean Julia Child of YouTube. Chris is going to get exactly two days to replicate this dish using every ingredient and perfect technique. The only catch is that he will only be able to use his senses of smell, taste, and touch. At no point in the two days is he going to be allowed to look at this dish. I'll come back to see his final creation and I will be the judge. Is this a kiss mask? I'm getting like sort of like star child thing happening. Oh, very interesting. I'd say it's like some kind of chicken, vegetable, brothy stew kind of situation. I need to work my way through this. I think it could be like a chili pepper. And the pepper itself is a pretty thin walled pepper. It doesn't taste raw, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it's been cooked to death, if that makes sense. Would I be able to get like a plate on the side to be able to lay some ingredients out? Whoa. So I have here what seems to be what I would guess is a potato. I feel like I'm getting some garlic. This is like really actually quite delicious. You guys did a great job. Okay. I've got like a slightly slimy, squishy thing inside another slimy, squishy thing. It's very firm. I have another element. I'm gonna go ahead and call this chicken breast. What the hell is going on over my right shoulder? Is somebody like sandblasting the countertops like while we're doing this? Like it just seems a bit rude. Is that you? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm trying to crack rice. With what? Uh, the skillet. It's sort of like, um, I don't know, like trying to like have somebody solve math problems when they're like mildly hypothermic, but that's fine. You know, they like got you like in like the friggin' tank, you're like freezing to death, like, and then they're like having you do like addition. There are these things in channels, like a very soft floppy thing inside a very like sharp edged roasted meat thing. Something like in the pear or apple family, but like why would you put... Man, Anna's really on one today, huh? Why would you stuff this thing in those slashes? It's kind of incomprehensible. I mean, maybe if you could see it, you know. Oh, man. <clears throat> man, it is sweet. It is hot. It is salty. <clears throat> there's funk and there's complexity and there's depth. Mm -hmm. It's fiery and it's intense and I really friggin' like it. I would say this dish comes from Korea and I feel like that mystery fruit thing is Asian pear. I don't know what happens to Asian pear when you braise it. I have a feeling we're gonna find out. This is still messing me up. It could be a ramp. I might just do that because it's not just as simple as a scallion. This does not feel like David Chang. You know, it's not just like over the top, like flavor, flavor, flavor. Maybe it's some like really specific treatment of like, you know, somebody like Manchi is doing. Maybe. That was quite the ride. All right, Gabby. Easy, <laughs> easy. I think I've got all the elements. Huh. My tubey tubes, this kind of allium sitch. Ramps. Thin walled chili segments with some seeds happening in there. And then we have like our big chunks of raisy potato. Potato. I think they're Yukon. Was there skin on that? It's like the, that, like honestly, like to go back, it's like, was there fing skin on that potato? I don't think so. We have Mr. Chicken with slashes. I feel like I'm gonna err on the side of throwing it into some kind of marinade. Soy sugar, rice bin. We need mystery pear sitch. And then I have like broth. Go to John. Garlic. Okay, we're gonna head over to the supermarket, see what I can find. Hopefully that'll prove illuminating. We will see. Cool. Got my bags. Uh, 
I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that it's boneless, skinless chicken breast. Okay. I'm gonna get the soy sauce as well, sugar. Let's go see what they have for gochujang. Gochujang is fermented soybeans and chili peppers. It usually has like wheat flour as a thickener, sugar as a sweetener. Gochugaro is Korean chili flakes. That in concert with gochujang is a substantial portion of the base of certain Korean stews. The smoking gun. Red Lester. That's where you kind of lose the most points. I just don't want to have a red Lester moment where I like walk right by the key ingredient that I should have seen, you know? This is a ramp. This stock feels kind of right. I'm like 80% on this. I'm gonna pick up a couple bunches of scallions just for safety, but I really don't think it was scallion. All right, let's get some potatoes. A couple heads of garlic. Pepper down. This is an Asian pear. It has a very particular crunchy texture. And I think this mystery fruit ingredient was holding together so beautifully, even though it was cooked so thoroughly. Plums, peaches, mangoes, regular apples, regular pears. I don't, I don't think it's any of that. First things first, I didn't get that much flavor from the chicken, to be honest. Whatever flavor is there, I'm, I'm, I'm walking. I'm free range. I feel like something salty was applied to that chicken, and then I feel like it was roasted, okay? That's just how I feel. A couple tablespoons of soy sauce, unseasoned rice vinegar. I'm gonna put in a little bit of sugar. It's really hard to say like what flavors were present on the chicken, but this will just be our starting point. I'm gonna do some slashes in here. I'm gonna let these sit in here, not for that long. I just want them to pick up a little bit of color, a little bit of zhuzh. What am I doing? I'm not doing tons of garlic here. Maybe I'll do a couple cloves sliced. Just a touch of neutral oil, sweat out some of that garlic, just ever so slightly golden around the edges. Throwing in some water. All right, so while that's heating up, we only found the extra spicy gochujang. Uh, Gochugaro is Korean chili flakes. They're sweet and they're earthy. They're seedless, so they're not like super hot, which means you can use a lot of them. So we'll do a teaspoon of gochugaru. Here's a tablespoon of the gochujang going in. You can see like how much flavor these ingredients can give your food. Uh, I like it. What I felt in this dish was that the body was coming mainly from the slight breakdown of the potato that was cooked in the broth. So I think they were peeled potatoes. I did not get potato skin. This might be right. These. I don't know. I'm gonna do these maybe in half, like a couple of these bigger guys. You know that expression, like you eat with your eyes. I've always been made fun of my entire life for eating with my nose first. You know, like I always smell everything before I taste it. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with the smell of this strawberry shortcake branded shampoo. Would not put it down for anything. I just love the smell. Yeah. Moment of truth, Asian pear. We're gonna see what happens. So I don't think I had skin on that pear. So this is what I was sort of sensing, like you have like one kind of cut face and then you have this like natural shape to the thing. It's almost like pear and watermelon had a baby. It's so good. You know what Sorry, a little garlic on the cutting board. Thank you. I'm hoping that it's gonna hold together. If it doesn't, then I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. I would say I am 75% confident in what I have in this pot. I have neutral oil, garlic, water, gochujang, gochugaru, Yukon gold potatoes, and Asian pear. Let's get a couple pieces of chicken on a sizzle platter and into the oven before getting finished in the stew. 425. So these are Korean hot peppers. Let's check out what happens when we put a chili in a dry skillet. But then the ramps, I don't think I want the leaves for these. I've got like a slightly slimy, squishy thing inside another slimy, squishy thing. It's very firm. See how like when you get inside there, it kind of gives you layers upon layers. 
the transitions with a scallion are kind of like Now I'm doubting everything. It sucks. A ramp is like very firm, whereas a scallion, as soon as this is cooked, it becomes very slimy. I'm leaning towards this just because it stayed way firmer. I'm just gonna quickly sear them off on the side. Ramps going in and then add them to the pot with our stew and see where that gets me. I feel like I'm going out on a few limbs here. See that flap? See that flop? It's really hot. That's the texture that I'm pretty sure I was tasting. That was a real moment. So I've got my sizzled ramps. I'm just checking out what's happening with these chilies. The pepper itself is a pretty thin walled pepper, but it didn't taste charred, you know what I mean? So I'm not sure about that. Oh. It's been 10 minutes. It looks a little goofy, right? This is really what I have to like slot a little slice of braised Asian pear into. It's not beautiful right now. It's not doing it for me. I feel like a little bit uncomfortable with how that looks. Let's just do this. Chicken's going in the pot. How about that? Can you live with that? How do you like me now? This, there's something a little bit like unpleasantly leathery, like really shriveled. I felt like they were a little bit plumper before and visually it's just very upsetting. So I've got my braised potato. I'm gonna get my chicken and I'm gonna get some of that Asian pear in those slashes. This is like suddenly just looking insane to me. I need to kind of probably scale these guys back. <sighs> Decisions, man. So I'm gonna trim these down. Like doing this right now, it seems just as a workflow, who's, who's plating a dish like this? You've got scalding hot chicken, burning your fingers. Are you really gonna sit there and like fish out bits of braised pear and construct it like this? It's insane. I'm ladling my broth over my plate here and I'm gonna top it with those blistered chilies. Something like that. This was my first crack at this dish. You know, these ramp middle sections, I feel like they should not be quite so hard cooked. Mm. Oh. That one's got some like whack flavor, I don't know. Then the chili component, I feel pretty good with this. Kind of makes sense texture wise. Feeling good about the potatoes. <clears throat> Heat's certainly good in the broth. I need to pay attention to the flavors on the chicken a little bit more. All the flavor from the broth just completely washed out what I did to it. The pear could get cooked a little bit less, but otherwise I am feeling 90% confident about that being Asian pear and not something else. Taste, this is running at 90%. I feel like I've got the correct flavors here. Appearance, maybe more like 85%. I just can't quite tell what's happening with that ramp situation exactly. In terms of ingredients, I'd say 85%. I think there could be some things happening with the chicken. There could be uh, an additional ingredient or two in the broth. Technique, you know, I'm gonna give myself 90. I really think the chicken's being roasted, the stew is being constructed like a stew, the chilies are being blistered in some fashion. So I feel pretty good about most of that. Overall, I think I'm at 85 to 87 in solid B territory. If I get anything higher than a C, I will be very happy. I'm about to taste the dish for the last time before I have to put my own version of the dish up. And I need to try to like filter out the noise and just see what's really there. Is it happening? Has it happened? It's happened. It's happened, okay, cool. We're back. I'm just trying to separate all the elements here. And this chicken has really been opened up, you know? That's kind of wild. And some of these slashes, you've got a couple of slices. I'm picking up maybe just a little bit of ginger flavor on the chicken, possibly. Maybe I'll put a little bit of grated ginger in my marinade. I'm thinking back on how my Asian pear tasted raw. This one is tasting slightly different to me, but I was so happy with the way it cooked up. So I'm gonna stick with that. This seems to be something that I missed on the first pass. I'm gonna say that's white onion. It's utterly flavorless. Man, this is messing me up. It's not my dish. There's this little knot where the shaft is like meeting the top greens. And those top greens seem to be hollow the way a scallion is, not the way that 
a ramp is. It tastes so plump and yet cooked. It doesn't taste dried out and leathery the way those ramps got. The ramps, I think that was kind of a dead end. I don't know. Anyway, still feeling confident that this is a, a Korean dish. My first guess was manchi. I'm gonna stick with it. I really feel pushed to the extremes. Whatever exactly is happening here, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of blown away, really. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be presenting my second version of this dish to Christina Che, and we'll see what happens. And I might just be dropping my imagined score from a B to a, let's call it a C plus. So yeah, some things to think about. We're back, day two. Sun's out, knives out, I'm ready. What? <laughs> That's my smoothie. Sorry, I meant to like have drunk it all before you came over. We had a pretty deep heart to heart about like the concept of this dish last no night. No spoilers. No, no, no. Don't with worry. Me. You were having an existential moment about your chicken. Clearly something's been done to it. But what? Yeah. How positive are you that it's chicken? Somebody has really tricked me into believing it's a boneless, skinless chicken breast. What's your biggest like remaining question mark? Oh, um... Is it the fruit? No, I mean, I feel like... Can I just say? Oh, yeah. You know how to do this. I know the body of knowledge you have uh -huh. about what you're doing here, and you have it. Interessante. Okay, okay. I'll see you later. All right, I'll check in with you in a little bit. All right, let's start with the broth. Garlic is going into the neutral oil and I'm gonna do the onion right alongside. I'm kind of just going with the white onion and kind of like big pieces. Two tablespoons unseasoned rice vin, half a teaspoon of sugar, two tablespoons regular soy sauce, and then I'm gonna grate ginger into that. Something happened to the chicken and it's my job to figure out what. Where'd our spoons go? I don't know how anybody cooks without, you know, a hundred spoons in a day. Like, are they not tasting their food? Molly, do you use tasting spoons every day or do you just like taste with one spoon? Like, what's your tasting spoon MO? Um, I walk over there and get a new one every time I need one. It's really inefficient. I, look, I don't ask for a lot. I just want spoons. I want spoons everywhere. Every station should have two things of spoons. Big spoons, little spoons. I'm going to make some deep crosswise slashes and then the chicken is going into the marinade where it's gonna hang out maybe for the next 15, 20 minutes. The onion, I don't want it to get like caramelized and fully soft. Some water, a teaspoon of gochugaru, and then we're gonna do two tablespoons of gochujang. So I have my Yukon Gold top. I'm 80%. There could easily be something else that I need in here that I just don't have. But I'm, okay, let's bump it to 85. I'm feeling good and expansive. It's Friday, lit it and quit it. Let's get the chicken in the oven. Still 425. Let's do eight minutes. Chilies are going in the skillet, dry. After my kind of scallion crisis slash epiphany of yesterday, Man, this is messing me up. It tastes so plump and yet cooked. Scallions tasted cooked. How the hell did that scallion get cooked? It may be so obvious that, yeah, of course sections of scallion were just dropped into the broth, or maybe they're just blanched on the side, like a bright green scallion kind of garnish that's kind of cooked. <sighs> that just seems stupid, but that's kind of maybe the most appropriate thing to what I tasted. I don't know, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that, we're going for it. Oh! Let's get some water up for our scallion garnish. The thing that made me feel like it was a ramp. Mm. Oh. You never know, somebody taking like a fresh, local, you know, kind of approach to some kind of Korean dish, like who knows, you know? Somebody's probably doing it somewhere. What do I know? All right, let's get these out of here. So I kind of want these to start to collapse a little bit. Guys, come on. We didn't put the friggin' Asian pear in there. Ugh. Like a goon, I totally forgot to put the pear in there. I was just staring at that thing like, hmm, doesn't really seem quite right, but let's just keep going, you know? 
So I gotta get some slices of that in there. Whatever, for Che, hopefully I won't screw it up. Chicken, I think, is done. I'm gonna drop one scallion in with the Asian pear. The one that I blanched, the texture seems correct, but that just seems so stupid and fussy to me, I can't do it. This is really good. It's hot. I pulled out the scallion just so it wouldn't like totally overcook. Obviously, we've got a major difference in color here, but this feels more natural and correct. This, I'm gonna scrap. Let's do this. You can do things with a glove on that you wouldn't do otherwise. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> this method feels whack to me. Having to like fish around in a stew for slices of something that you're then gonna arrange painstakingly. But you know what? Somebody else's vision and you know, I can, I can respect that they've got like a different idea. Jesus Christ, this looks so fussy. All right, so let's get some potato in there. Definitely gotta get some onion in there. Chili and then scallions. This is pass number two. I mean, it looks kind of crazy, right? It doesn't look bad, but it looks kind of crazy. The chicken has that appropriately slightly tough and leathery outside. I think I'm getting a little too much ginger flavor in there. I need to pull that right back. And that Asian pear really balances the dish nicely because you actually get the sweetness in the broth itself. That is my onion, which is I think appropriately sort of flavorless, but there. I feel really good about switching from uh, ramps to scallions. I think I was just in a really bad place with the ramp thing, but I'm back. And then chili, thin skinned, but with like good consistent and persistent heat. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I think I'm pretty good with what I'm gonna show Christina. There's not a whole lot I'm gonna be changing here. Appearance. I'm saying 92%. These are the elements. I don't think there's anything else going on there that I haven't figured out. Taste, I'm gonna go 90. It's the right heat, it's the right depth. Technique, 85. I just am not 100% sure about that chicken and I'm not sure about the marinade and I'm not sure about you know, certain things with the workflow there. And ingredients, I'm gonna go back to 90. I was pretty good about identifying ultimately like what a lot of these things were, at least I think I was. So overall grade I think is sort of like an 89. All right, this is my last chance. Like I'm fired up to get going. I'm just trying to push this along so nobody gets bored. The Asian pear is something that I felt pretty good about the entire process. I mean, honestly, the sun's out. I'm feeling expansive. I'm giving myself a 95% and I don't do that. I never want to be on record for like giving myself an A because you just look like that much more of a doofus when you're wrong. I just wanted a tiny bit of ginger that was definitely a little too much this morning. We're gonna push this along as fast as we can. <clears throat> Ooh, uh. <clears throat> Friggin' heat, ma'am. Yeah. This is kind of what I'm doing. Soup is done, chicken is done, garnish is done. Take it to the plate. You know, moments like this, I just like keep looking at this thing and I'm just like, but is that right? These are our blistered chilies going on. This is the dish I'm gonna serve to Christina. I'm back down to an 85. The process of doing it this one more time just sort of made me start to like doubt everything. I can be a B student and be happy, you know, like literally flying blind with um, some of these dishes, so. We'll see. How are you feeling? I get really nervous in the beginning of these things and I get really nervous again at the end. I'm nervous for you. I would like to present to you Mong Cheese Spicy Braised Chicken. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> these look really, really similar. I'm like very impressed. Thanks. Do you know anything about this dish? Like, no, I was triangulating kind of like, wait, like Korean video, really like specific takes on dishes. Manchi came to mind immediately. It's known by a couple different names. I think she calls it takbokumtang. It's a braised chicken stew. And so you're it's telling me made... this chicken was braised? Before we get into like the specifics, I'm just gonna taste mm. the original one one more time. Now I'm gonna compare this to your rendition. It's interesting, I can already tell that your fruit is like a little bit different. Is hers firmer? 
No. Okay. Careful of your shirt, making me real so, nervous. For some reason, this one to me tastes like it was cooked less, or mm -hmm. cooked for a shorter period of time. The flavors of the gochujang are just like a lot more like in your face. Yeah. Those flavors will mellow out the longer you mm. kind of stew them out. I'm just going to take a guess that there were some differences in process. Sure. Um, I'm. It's not necessarily a braise in the sense that you're sweating out alliums and all that stuff. She's not sweating anything out. Okay. It's like everything is going into one pot raw. So it's raw chicken mm. that's been kind of accordion and then tucked with the, the apple slices. Tucked. It's apple. You tasted golden delicious apples. Fascinating. So then you make a seasoning paste mm. out of the gochujang, the gochugaru, some soy, a couple of other things. And then mm. all of that goes into the pot with the raw chicken water. And then that just cooks down. There's not a single chili or like allium element added until almost the end of the cook. It's funny when things are that simple. It's really hard for me to break out of my kind of own MO for how I would treat ingredients. Putting like a raw allium into something <laughs> if it's into not a, a scallion of, is sort of into like- Into a pot mm. with some cold water. <laughs> and I couldn't really figure out the chicken because the way this is kind of dried out, I put a little bit of soy, rice vin, and a touch of ginger in the marinade and then just did a roast on it. So you roasted I, this? Yeah, so I put it in the oven. The texture, felt kind of I need to tell like, you what the texture was actually coming from. It was actually um, milk. She, <laughs> she seasons the hassle-backed chicken with salt, and then she lets it sit in a bowl of milk for about half an hour. Her thinking is that it draws out the impurities or something. Yes, and actually that's like a kind of interesting thing about the Korean treatment of a lot of proteins. You wash you like the proteins, or something. you rinse it in water. Like my parents always rinse chicken under the sink. I never, I didn't really think that the apple had been put in the chicken from the very beginning. I basically put my pear free form into the stew and then did that as a kind of like artificial plating technique because that's kind of what it had felt like. One other thing that I wanted to point out is yeah. that I have never seen this made this way before. Sugar is a sweetening agent in this dish oh, traditionally. Okay. This is one of those dishes that you make at home and yeah. everyone, you know, everyone's grandma like has their own way. Like my grandma uses like bone in chicken thighs. You did a pretty good job of like gathering together all the seasoning. You sort of nailed it. Are you able to tell at all that the seasoning elements for her version were mixed on their own and kind of just dumped in as a paste? No, I mean, I don't think that really matters as opposed to just putting ingredients in one by one. I mean, I don't think that like makes any I agree, noticeable difference. Putting something directly into a liquid environment it's 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 the same fucking thing. If you want to ding me, you know, for like charring my chilies, like I'll 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 you know die on the altar for that. Ingredients, eighty-five. You mostly nailed it. There were a couple things. You went for the pear instead of the apple. Mm -hmm. I personally am not going to take it as a doc uh, that you missed the milk because I don't know. I, like not even the best super taster I know could figure it out. Taste, you get a ninety. Ah, oh, okay, um, cool. I think that like your flavors were all there. For appearance, full marks, like 100%. I feel like we started there, I was like, holy shit, these look like totally the same. Technique, I think, was like the great downfall of this challenge for yeah. you. Your technique score is a 64. Ooh. You went a little Chris Paco, you know? I went you like about marinated it a totally your chicken, way, you yeah. roasted it. Which brings I'm... your total score, however, though, to a solid 85. Okay. I think you did pretty great. How happy am I that I didn't keep the ramps in this? Like, let's just focus on that for a minute. Oh, Rampocalypse. You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> Rampocalypse now. <laughs> I am extremely delighted at the fact that you got such a close approximation to something that I think was not at all the way that you're used to thinking and cooking every day. I think you did a great job. Ah, oh, thank you. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know, that was tough, but it was fair. The milk is gonna haunt me now, so. To know that in the end it was the process and the techniques that really kind of did me in, that was, uh, that was tough. Yeah, I mean, look, I didn't make an ass of myself and at the end of the day, that's kind of what it's about uh, for me anyway. I think the more that I go through this exercise, the longer I have that blindfold on, the better I get at trusting myself in a just kind of intuitive and comfortable way and not beating myself up about what I think or what I don't think. Add milk. Just any type of meat is okay. 
when you marinate the chicken with the milk. Uh, miss the milk. Miss the miss fucking the milk. milk. That's a dick move. Oh my god, that is <laughs> fucking raw. Could, Could we give a caveat? Could we be like, you know, like milk? Who's supposed to get milk? Very fine.